So we've talked about convolutions. We talked about the size of convolutions. So we might have a three by three convolution and the depth of this convolution is going to match the depth of the incoming tensor. So if we have something that's of size, let's say, I don't know, 22 by 22 by 5, then that is going to need a 3 by 3 by 5 tensor. We've talked about the fact that we have padding, which controls whether a output is going to be the same size as the input. So if we have half padding, then we would get for this 22 by 22 by 5, for every one of these 22 by 22 entries, we would center the 3 by 5 kernel here and we would get a single pixel. So our output would be a 22 by 22 by, for this particular convolution, 1. This, by the way, is called a feature map sometimes. So the kernel is pulling out some sort of feature from its incoming data, right? whether that's an image at the first level or later on in levels. And so this just provides a spatial representation of the features in here. One of the assumptions we made, though, is that we were going taking this 3x3 three three matrix, centering on the top left pixel, and then moving it over one pixel, moving it over one pixel, moving it over one pixel, and so on. That is called the stride. So the stride is the amount to move as you're applying convolutions. When we have a 3x3 three three kernel, then what we see is that a stride of 1 gives us uh, some overlap. Right? So if we look... So we've got this input, and we now look at a convolution, a 3 by 3 convolution centered here. Then in our next application of the convolution, we'll go here, and we'll then have an overlap of two pixels with the previous convolution. If, on the other hand, we said, no, we're going to actually move two at a time, so we'll next move here, and then convolution will be here. And then for our final movement, we'll move to and we'll move here. And we could do the same thing moving down. So we start here, we have a stride of two, a stride of two. But well, what would happen here? Well, that would mean instead of ending up, so we started with a five by five, in a normal three by three kernel with half padding, if we have a stride of one, let's just write this down. So we have three by three kernel, we have half padding, and we have a stride of 1, this is going to end up with, so let's say we have a 5x5 five five input, this will end up with a 5x5 five five output. If, however, we go ahead and do a stride of 2, then that can end up with a 1, 2, 3 by 1, 2, 3. So we've seen actually two ways in which an output tensor can be of smaller dimensions than the input tensor, right, in terms of height and width. One way is by having zero padding. That way we're going to shrink down by the kernel size over 2 on one side, the kernel size over 2 over the other side. Basically, the kernel size minus 1, assuming this is odd, it'll shrink down. So if we use a 3 by 3 and have zero padding, we'll shrink by 2 pixels in each direction. Right? The height and the width will reduce by 2. If we had a 5 by 5, we would reduce by a total of 4 in each dimension. That's one way we can reduce dimensions. A second way we can reduce dimensions is by using a stride that's not 1. So a non-1 stride is going to actually have us reducing the dimensions. So when we look at the new dimensions, let's look at what we're calling the output dimensions. So the output dimensions Put dimensions are a simple function of the input dimensions and what? The height and width of the kernel, because theoretically they could be different, although in practice everyone uses square kernels, and padding and the stride. That's stride.